Disney TVA shows have become increasingly plot-based ever since the smash hit that was Gravity Falls, and Milo Murphy's Law is no exception. But one trend that I've noticed is the tendency to introduce more prominent villains early on in the series' run. Spoilers for Tangled and DuckTales, but Cass and Xanteri were introduced long before Season 3, and Scrooge's board of directors were prominent long before the reveal of Fowl going into Season 3. So, I think Milo Murphy's Law was planning on doing the same thing, especially given how Dan and Swampy thought through the plot lines of the show long before it began. So without further ado, let's take a look at Cavendish and Dakota's employers, the Block family, and why I suspect that they would have been the lead villains in Milo Season 3. Today's episode is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon at patreon.com slash Phineas Flynn's Law. Let's start with a general look at how Milo Murphy's Law handles its plot. It's pretty loose. The show is far more focused on comedy, and a lot of the details don't add up. One example is the Octalians in Season 2. They discover Milo on a routine scan of the planet, but then have surveillance of him from episodes they didn't even know he existed in back in Season 1. So the continuity of the show isn't quite airtight. Even one of the writers has acknowledged that some things timeline-wise don't add up just for the sake of a joke. I guess the point is I could be reading way too much into everything, but that won't stop me from theorizing. So, Bob Block is the leader of the Time Bureau circa 2170, which is about when Cavendish and Dakota become time travelers. Now, here's a few questions I won't answer so as to keep us on the right track. Why is time travel a government division? Why is Mr. Block unable to remember timeline changes? How would he ever evaluate their work? How the heck is he given the power to banish workers to other time periods just so he doesn't have to see them? Basically- Oh, crap, I went off topic. Basically, Mr. Block is a not-so-nice a dude who runs something way too important for his fickle temper. However, the place at least seems to run properly. There's a rules book, an annual Christmas party, and they apparently did manage to stop World Wars 3 and 4. What in the World War 6? So, even though Block gets off banishing Cavendish and Dakota to the past for breaking the rules and perhaps the worst trial mankind has ever seen, the system works. Overall. Heck, future older Block even knows how important Cavendish and Dakota are, so it's likely he planned on rehiring them at some point. You two are in big trouble! You crossed your own- You don't want to get these guys in trouble tonight, trust me. Have you tried the buffet? You know, it's free, right? Tastes better when it's free! So, in Season 2 of Milo, when Cavendish and Dakota are banned back to present day with no time travel equipment, they end up getting hired by P.I.G. And welcome to P.I.G. P.I.G? What's that? You heard him, it's top secret. When we get back, we'll have new jobs! Yay, Pataki! AKA the Paranormal Investigation Group. This is run by none other than the great-great-great-grandfather of Mr. Block, Bob Block. He's voiced by Mark Hamill as well, but he has a completely different vibe. Rather than openly harsh, he is more subdued in appearance and demeanor. Happy Monday, boys! Ah! How are my two favorite refuse engineers? You'll be happy to hear that I have an important new mission for you. Some fan theories make Bob Block out to be either a robot or an alien, which we still don't know about because Mr. Block has never acknowledged Bob as his grandfather. But anyways, let's take a look at this P.I.G. Cavendish and Dakota work for a division within it, the Purveyors of Intergalactic Garbage. Basically, they pick up trash, but it's also really unimportant. Like, they get sent on assignment to pick up human trash by accident, and Bob doesn't even plan on reassigning them until the next week. Turns out it's not alien trash at all. You've just been cleaning up regular trash all day. We'll get you back on alien trash tomorrow. Next week, tops. Toodles! This obviously frustrates Cavendish more than Dakota, and is crucial to Cavendish's arc for the season. But I have to wonder if there are any other garbage collectors. So, what happens when Cavendish and Dakota actually visit the PIG building for once? Well... Look, all alien ships that enter Earth's atmosphere are required to notify us when they're abducting people. I would certainly know of any unauthorized abductions but, before the two of you would. But, but, sir, what about the poor unknown person who was abducted? I mean, who's going to help him? <laughs> Not you, but only because there was no abduction. Toodles! Yes, sir! Come with me. I need to look like I'm going somewhere. That's right. There's no one else there. Now, is this just because of no animation budget? Possibly. But why aren't there any other cars in the parking lot? The only two people here are Bob and his assistant, Toodles. Oh, Toodles! Now, Bob also claims that there are no unauthorized abductions. 
meaning that he has either authorized the abduction of Milo due to the situation with the Octalians, or he has no freaking clue what he's talking about. Wait, there are authorized abductions? What the heck? Nobody blinks an eye at this? But, but, but back to Milo. The Octalian ship isn't in the PIG records at all, which makes me think that Block has far less control over alien activity than he lets on. And yet, no one notified the paranormal investigation group of this abduction in broad daylight? Making matters even more confusing, later in the season we see that Auka detects the alien ships before they even break the atmosphere, and they send Perry. But the PIG? Nowhere to be seen. Now, there is one other almost abandoned PIG facility that is visited. The Armory. Wait, 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 what? The Armory? Okay, so this alien monitoring organization fights aliens and has numerous weapons to do such? Yep, we even see Bob Block fighting an alien who knows where early on in the season. So, okay, some work gets done at this place. At least two no-name suits and toodles work for Block. Great, let's see if we can find some more. Oh, here we go. To avoid detection, certain alien species use a manic amnesia ray. This ray erases any memory of the sighting and causes the subject to act erratically so they won't be believed by the authorities even if they do remember it. So there's training for employees. Okay, so maybe there's a legion of trash agents plus the two suits, toodles, and that one guy running the armory. What a staff. My theory, this government organization is a sham. Bob Block is clearly attempting to exterminate aliens or something. Even crazier, Bob once didn't even tell Dakota what alien item he was looking for until after it had removed his bones. Now, let's take a look at Bob's given qualifications to become an alien agent. You know the only way you can become full agents is to discover an alien species or alert us to alien activity that we don't already see. <laughs> and we have eyes everywhere. What? There's no interview? That's just it? Yeah, this place is a sham. Bob Block's overarching story is never resolved, and we never find out why he always has pictures of cats behind him either, but this dude is so shady. Not to mention his character design has individual teeth, which is something that's pretty rare in the series, and he's voiced by the actor responsible for one of the best villain voice performances of all time, Mark Hamill as the Joker, or the Fire Lord, or, well, you get the idea. Yeah, so each season of Milo has been devoted to a sci-fi classic. Season one, time travel, season two, aliens, and the word was that season three was gonna be robots. Aliens were teased in season one for season two, and there's enough hints about a robot uprising in season two that I'm willing to believe that was the plan. So, do I think Bob Block was saving weapons and planning a robot uprising using Cavendish and Dakota to collect alien technology to apply to his robot self and make him more dangerous? Of course, not necessarily. I can assure you with everything shady about P.I.G., his villainous intentions were gonna come out somehow. It will be interesting to see if P.I.G. is brought up in Candace Against the Universe since she's, you know, getting abducted. If it is, I'll have to make an addendum to this video. But until next time, thanks for watching Phineas Flynn's Law. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I do want to point out a few of the questions I had about the Block family and the intentions of the writers were answered in my interview with Joshua Perrette. Once I go through the video to find the highlights, I will post a link to Josh's comments on the Block family so you have that information. And in addition, I just launched my merch store, so if you want to get some official Phineas Flynn's Law merch with this amazing design, go and check it out. I'll see you next time on Phineas Flynn's Law.